Hello everybody, my name is Gary J, and welcome to my speedrunning submission video for Bakugan Defenders of the Core from the Nintendo Wii. Defenders of the Core is the third main console Bakugan game, and unlike the real game in real life, which is basically kind of a board game, if you've never seen it, this game's kind of a uh, Dragon Ball Z beat-em-up, which it actually does really well for the series, honestly. It kind of mesh, it kind of works. So, we're going to start right into the one. This game is being submitted as a New Game Plus race. So, uh, with Piner, who is also submitting this game. What New Game Plus basically lets us do is we get to unlock, we get to use any Bakugan throughout the entire run, including some that are specifically only allowed after you beat the game once. We're going to be able to use all of them, they can be completely powered up to as much as we want, I'm going to be using them to fight through every single level, and we can use, choose any any Bakugan we want, except for the very tutorial, very beginning tutorial. So, we're going to start right into the one. We're going to go in three, two, one, go! So we're going to load into the tutorial right here, and like I mentioned a little bit ago, we can choose any Bakugan for any other fight in the game, but we're forced to use the basic Dragonoid in this fight. Dragonoid is kind of decent, but he is nowhere near as strong as the strongest Bakugan we're going to be using in this run, so it's we kind of have to route out our fights. The, the tutorial for basically everyone that runs this game is probably the most optimized split out of or the most practice split out of everyone, because you kind of have to know what the enemies are going to be like and how they're going to react. Maxis Drago, how is that even possible? This Woo! is virtual reality. Anything's, Anything's possible. possible. Also, I kind of have to wait for it. What happened to going easy? Don't worry. So we're going to see the first bit of combat right, right here. Away. As soon as Dan, you know, Try spawns in the end. Trap that That's not what I expected. First, Bakugan blow. What? Huh? Chase talk. Let's try some brawling basics. Like Let's try some attack. brawling basics. There we go. So we're gonna have to do Weak fight these fast, few traps first. Traps are basically just weaker Bakugan, and they are, are also the um. If you haven't known in real life, there's Bakugan that are balls, and there's Bakugan not that are bad. other shapes, kind of like cubes all. and such. The tr these uh, the cubes and such, the and random shaped ones, are the traps combos. in the game. So. Dang it. So. The tutorial is pretty much the same every time we play it, except for right here. These trap Bakugan, these next, these second set of three, can have more health than normal, which makes it a little annoying to fight them, so we can do more hits. Usually, you can do uh, a combo of seven hits, uh, three weak and then three or four heavy, but um, sometimes they just have more health and it's kind of annoying. So we're going to go right into the next room, and we're going to be fighting Dan himself, which is portrayed by Max You got a dash to keep up. We got a dash to keep up. All right. We're gonna I've be fighting him, and I'm gonna be in, right on. after this. I'm gonna try to do a very precise glitch. It's a one frame glitch. If I can get it, it'd be really nice. But it rendered a one frame for it. I'm gonna try it out. Nope, that's not gonna work. Use the targeting button to change targets. Not quite. Okay. Whoa, that wasn't quite it. What's going on? So what I was trying to do is I was trying is to use the ability card, which is the thing that made me shoot the ball out. I was trying to have it um, use it at the same exact frame that the cutscene started. There's a cutscene that spawns into traps. How am I supposed to battle but uh, with I really want to shaking. check this at the same exact frame. Uh, because if I do, it doubles the damage. Um, That was a... I got most of the damage, but I didn't quite get all of the double damage you can. So what basically happens is... Um, Drago takes the damage and then the cutscene starts and then he immediately takes the damage again so it just doubles the damage. I got about an extra 60% damage there but I didn't get all of it. But besides that, that was actually a really really clean fight. Dan can kind of just space you out and kind of just continue to hit you and I really don't want that because I want to be hitting him because you know that's faster. So, uh, so before I explain the lore of the game, we have to talk about parallel universes. We, in the tutorial, we were in our own universe, training with Dan in a thing, in our virtual reality computer program. But all of a sudden, the computer, the program kind of short-circuited, and, um, so Dan left, and instead of us leaving, our player decided he's just gonna stand there for like five seconds, and then all of a sudden he got zipped into a parallel universe, where all of his friends exist, but no, they don't know who he is, because he's not from this universe, so, this game has amazing plot, 
You can probably tell it's gonna be a lot more amazing things later. So I'll mention them later, but I'll mention right now that that was the first bit of movement in the game. So oh before I explain that, I wanna mention this. So we're gonna be using a one of the main one of the two Bakugan we're gonna be using for the rest of the one is called Magma Wilda. He is an extremely strong Bakugan, as you can probably as I will demonstrate in this first level. Also, those little every every fight starts with those that little animation of people talking, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Oh my god!" Anyway, wow. I don't know why I just love that. Did that so, really just spit out a trap Bakugan? so you probably know I just I have no idea both. what's going on. That's how. Um, That's what I'm ah, talking it. about. So Rilda is extremely strong. He's one of the best. I'd be fair to say he's the strongest Bakugan in the game, all around stat wise. So, I will explain why it's this, but right now, he had a crawl complete, so. So, um, the main reason Wilda is extremely strong is he is a ground based attacker. There are three different types of, or really four different types of Bakugan. Uh, there is speed, there is aerial, there is ground, which is power. It's labeled as power, but it's really just ground. And then there's all around, which Drago, the Drago we used before is all around. This one, he is attack based, which is, um, ground mostly. And, um, so that means he has really good power overall. In he just end, really isn't we as good flying and such. But, um, the really neat thing is when... Each Bakugan has a stat page where you can upgrade your stats. Um, and for some reason, they gave two boosts. You can buy, purchase two combo uh, upgrades. Also, Marucho there is trying to tell us what to do. So, at this point. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, Maru um, you can upgrade. You can upgrade his combo attack twice. The problem is, is the combo work. The combo boosting combo power. For specifically the Wii version, this is a Wii version exclusive glitch. Um, it boosts all of his power, except for his projectile, but his projectile is pretty bad anyway. Also, I totally hit that button. Don't worry about it, we're gonna keep going. Uh, so, we can upgrade his combo uh, two times, which basically upgrades all of his power both two times, which makes him extremely powerful. He's only one of two Bakugan in the game. That lets you upgrade it twice, which means he's extremely powerful. So we're gonna be using him a lot, and we're gonna be using one other Bakugan. We're gonna use him in the next one, though. We're not gonna use him quite yet because he is weak to the Bakugan we're gonna fight here. I should also mention that each Bakugan, just like in Pokemon, specifically in the games, Bakugan have weaknesses and strengths. So like, we are an Earth-based Bakugan. We are strong against air, but we're weak against light. There's also official terms, but I can never remember them. There's like Pyrus is the fire, Darkest is the ground, or is the uh, dark. I can never remember the other ones though, so I'm gonna really refer to them as like ground and light and such. Just because I can never remember them. So we're gonna go into the second fight of the game. We're gonna be fighting uh Oh Elfin, that's what. We're gonna be fighting Elfin. Elfin is one of is I would say the second fastest fight Bakugan in the entire game. Which is gonna make it really annoying because we wanna be doing the mid-air heavy attack on her. Those crystals must have done something to her. So the best thing that can happen there is Elfin can get stuck in the corner, which lets you just continually beat her up if she dies. She can she can take a long time to kill if you really want to. Because it's because she can decide to run around and specifically Wilda isn't that fast. So, that really makes it a little annoying when So... That, this fight can, that fight can go really horribly. That went pretty decently. My best segment in this split, which is actually the best segment for everyone that runs on Wii, uh, Elfin immediately turned to the left, or to the right on her end. She turned to the right and got stuck in a corner. And her AI didn't work properly, and she just kept running into a building, because, you know, that makes sense. And I just beat her up three times, and I killed the rest of the fight pretty quick. And it's actually a pretty good split. Really, really optimized. Just a fun fact. How can you expect? So, um, right there, we kind of we learned right there that we are actually just from a different universe. We are from a different parallel universe. 
Also, I should probably mention, the main uh, problem, the main situation in this game is the enemies in this universe figured out how to make people not be able to play Bakugan. Because apparently, it takes a lot of skill to throw a ball onto the ground and yell Bakugan ball. I don't know how, but they, they forgot how to do that. So, but it doesn't affect us because, you know, anime reasons and protagonist reasons. So, we have to fight everyone in order to save this universe. Also, right there, I'm using an ability called Invisibility. It, you know, recently, it makes me invisible. It lets me pass through those, those little red things right there. If I walk into the red thing, I get caught, and I either have to give up a Vexus pass, which is something I don't have, so it's not really applicable for the one, or I lose some power, I lose some of my uh, core energy, which is what you use to level up people, and you respawn from wherever the last checkpoint you hit is. This was not the right thing. I hit the wrong button. Heck, okay. Well, I can I can still do this fight. I was supposed to change Bakugan there, but I was I accidentally hit start battle. So, oops. Um, I'm gonna keep going. So, like I mentioned before, our Wilda is weak to light Bakugan, and we're gonna be using light. We're gonna be fighting light here. Of all the fights to loot, this menu like that. This is probably the best one because it's not horribly slower. That's what I'm talking about. So we were gonna switch to Max's Dragon Lord. Who's actually the the Bakugan Dandy from the tutorial? He can Max's Dragon Lord can get rid of all of these in two hits. I had to do it with three nice with Wilda. So it's a little unfortunate like that. Okay, so you kinda saw I was trying to beat up, I was destroying that building. My reason for that is if you destroy the area around you, buildings, light posts, rocks. Slightly bigger rocks, things like that. They can drop power boosts, and um, if you get a power boost, There's it doubles your attack. It doubles the damage. I should say, it doubles the damage you give. Yeah. Sweet. So, um, this is very useful. Hopefully, I get one right here. This is the slowest part of not having, uh, not choosing. Dang. That pillar has a decent chance of um, destroying or uh, dropping a power boost. Pretty optimistic. I was optimistic about it. If you're in trouble, using ability cards can really turn things around. You might want to change it up by shooting. You I might want to change it up by way. shooting. Yeah, that wasn't exciting. I only lost about like I'd say 15 seconds. Another easy win. So. That was not horrible for me freaking pressing the wrong Baku gun. With Wilder there, that fight can go horribly wrong, so I'm glad I didn't lose much time at all. So. So I don't actually have to switch him. I don't have to. I'm supposed to be using Drago for that fight, and I'm supposed to switch back to Wilder for this fight, and then switch back, but I don't have to switch. So that's, that's, that's saving time right there. It takes about 8 seconds to switch. So I technically, I saved a second. <laughs> if you want to look at it like that. What an intrigue! Very intriguing! Oh yeah, and just in case you're kind of curious, if you've seen the show recently and kind of are thinking, that doesn't quite sound like Dan, or that doesn't quite sound like, uh, Marucho. The voice actors in this game, actually except for Marucho, Marucho is the only one that doesn't, isn't included in this. The voice actor in the, the voice actors for this game are different from the ones in the show. So Dan sounds slightly more nasally than he normally does. That's because he's actually just a different, he's voiced by a different person. Marucho is actually, I believe, the only person that's excluded from that. They actually have the actual voice actor in this game. Which is kind of weird how he's the only one. But. So you saw right there, I kind of was weaving left and right a bit. This is where in the story we unlock the visor, which is what we are able to do. We use it in order to see things that are invisible. But we have that already because this is New Game Plus, so we can skip that cutscene. But also, every level is basically, if every level goes on a global cycle. Usually every single level has a cycle uh, where just an, either an enemy is turning or a guard is walking around or spef specifically right there, gates are opening and closing. So if I use the guys, if I use the uh, goggles, you would be able to see that there's gates that were opening and closing. But I knew uh, since it's on the global cycle and I was on cycle, was the first thing that was, I was facing. He's supposed to be on our side. Uh, I just knew where they were, so I didn't, I didn't have to. We're on the same team. I didn't even have to. 
It really didn't lose much time if I did it. It's just neat. Also, what's happening right now is I'm fighting these traps. How do they do that? How did you do that? Just how many of these things are there? Get back here. So. So these traps are usually on our side, but they've become, they've turned evil because uh, the crystals, these crystals right here, are great to play Which is also why Elfin in the last couple, in two splits from ago. Let's go. That's why Elfin was fighting us. Elfin is us is the main Bakugan that Marucho uses, but she's come, become a, she was taken from Marucho at the very beginning of the game and she was turned mind control. She was turned evil. Is a mind control, so. A little bit of a plot there. It's not really that important, but. Yeah. That's kind of explaining why. So, if you're curious why it I'm beating up like one of the main buck gun from the show, that's why. So, like I said before, this is the third main console game in the buck gun games. Um, this is based off of, these characters are from the season 3 and beyond, I'm pretty sure, of, uh, this, the get the show. Also, go for it, before I continue that thought. I'm gonna do a glitch right here. Oh. Nope, I missed it. Ooh. Got it, nice. So whenever you select a Bakugan, you're supposed to go to, you go to the next menu where you pick your ability card, but we really don't want to do that. Because we already have them set up because this is a new game plus. So whenever we load the game in, they're already set up to whatever we want. So, um, so what I do is I press B, which closes the menu. But within the next two frames after I do that, I press A. And while you press B, the menu is kind of closing. But if you press A, like, immediately after it, you can, uh, you can still select box down. So that seems it's about that seems about eight seconds. Your attacks don't seem to be having an effect. So that's really Try nice. Again after you defeat all the Bakugan. So I'm going right over here to uh Persilus, which is one of the another one of the protagonists of the game. I went right for him instead of going in and ignoring the other guy. Mainly because uh I wanted to kill him because that would progress the fight. If I killed the flying guy, I mean, sure, I'd have to do it anyway, but I wanted to destroy him first because it would progress the next phase of the fight. We're going to be doing that a couple times, so if you're curious why I'm completely ignoring some enemies, that's why. Oh, so probably mentioned, so this is an active dragon. He is the second Bonker gun we're going to be using throughout the run. Right here, I'm destroying these buildings in order to try it out. I might actually have to start trying. Get a power boost? Maybe? Nope. That's a good If we get a power boost, we can this fight can go on. But the nice thing about getting a, a boost um, is I had I had an effect that lowered my attack, but it's gone now because I picked it up. That's what you can do is we can fight. That's the way I like it. Also, she mentioned, so you can get, when you destroy a building, you can get four different things. You can get a attack boost, you can get a defense boost, you can get a health recovery item, or you can get a gate card. Uh, we really want um, the power boost, mostly, because uh, like I said, oh, I think I said earlier, I, oh yeah, I did. Uh, it doubles your attack. It doubles all of the damage you give. So that's really, really handy for a game that just entirely fights, so... It's not important. It's not needed at all to complete the run, but a lot of in the world record, which I actually have, I have world record for the Wii version, which is 59 minutes and 43 seconds, I think. I don't remember exactly. It's something like around there. Um, a lot of the splits in the in the world record, I'd say about, I think four of the, uh, 15 fight or 17 fights we do, uh, four of the 17 fights we do in the game, I get a power boost, which is, saves a lot of time. Even though it's only four. So. Right here, when you play the game casually, this is where you get invisibility for the first time. So I've been kind of using it throughout the run. Um, whenever you might notice that I'm using it and immediately undoing it, like you'll notice right up here. Oh. 
So whenever you undo invisibility for some reason, uh, you have about a second of almost a second of leeway after you undo invisibility, where you're still you still can't be detected. So that's also exclusive to the Wii version. I should mention the Wii version is the most RAM out of most of the versions. We have three different category sections on our leaderboard. We have Xbox, we have Wii, and we have. Uh, I, I had to check my route, I'm sorry. Um, we use, we have P Xbox and PS2, Wii and P uh, DS and PSP. Those are the three leaderboards, three categories on the leaderboards, if you check the leaderboards. So, uh, Wii is the most RAM because it has the most glitches, it has, as the most weird exploits, it has the glitch like I mentioned with Wilda, and also, Max Dragon Knight has the ability to where you can upgrade the attack twice. So you know, we Vexos, we like to change it up. This here's our latest crystal, and it's gonna blow your mind. Gatebird! Nice, open. Gatebird. So that's kind of nice. Gatebirds are kind of annoying, where now they just, you have to watch little cutscenes when they activate and deactivate. It but it's kind of nice. It does a little bit more damage. And that actually lets me one-hit all of those. So basically, the battle will continue forever until we break it. So what you're saying right there is the, um... It's also, fun, Ingram is personally I my least favorite fight in the game. Just because he's really fast. He's, I mentioned before it. how uh, Elf is the second fast character now. in the game. He, Elf, uh, Ingram is the fastest. So. Under attack. Head to the yellow icon on your map to protect it. The landmark is under attack! So, so um, some pillars, we'll see some of uh, crystals, not all of them, some of them will spawn traps. So most of the time when you load for a level like that, it is our main priority to destroy it. Because it, it will continue to spawn traps, and the fight ends only after you destroy all the traps. We have that's usually our main priority. That's the way I like it. So we're gonna be using Drago for the next, I think, two fights. I'm pretty sure. So I will mention though that um, there are five different areas. Well, technically it says, but there's five different areas of the globe we're gonna go to. We're gonna go to Egypt, we're gonna go to United Kingdom, China, Japan, and the US. And each one has three levels on it. But only, but two of the three levels in each uh, section have movement in front of, in before them. So, like right here, I'm gonna load into a level and before I get to the fight, I'm gonna be doing a bit of movement. Uh, one out of every three for each area does not have movement. You just go directly into a fight. So, it's kinda nice. We're gonna be doing, there's 11 movements we're gonna be doing. Uh, like overall my map movements which we're gonna load into right here so it's kind of nice to know so how long do you plan hey guys do you like boats I really like boats um I'm just gonna let this cutscene play because that's just how much I love boats like just imagine the craftsmanship of this boat. I mean, just it's so well done. You can ride it down the water so you don't get wet. I mean, look at this boat. It's such a cool fucking boat, guys. It's like, I could explain how this cutscene's not skippable, and you just have to watch it, which is kind of dumb. But no, I just love boats so much. I mean, can you just imagine that amazing boatmanship of that boat? It's just, it's the highlight of my run, TB, to be honest, H. Also, neat little thing is, if you wait long enough, um, before hitting that second checkpoint, the, the character, the person riding the boat will, um, get to the dock, but when you hit the second checkpoint, it respawns and it has to do the entire track over again, so you can't just skip the cutscene like that. But I mean, why would you want to skip the cutscene? It's a boat! It's such a cool looking boat! Can you imagine the boatsmanship of that boat and the boat and the water for the boat? Boats are so cool. So. This is, uh, these crystals, there's gonna be two crystals here that are gonna spawn traps, but before I handle them, I'm gonna kill this guy. Because it's a very easy fight. And they're both spitting out traps! We gotta make sure the landmark doesn't get caught in the crossfire! I'm specifically going to this one first. I can't miss it. This is only one to that one first, because he. Your landmark's under attack. Head to the that crystal will spit out uh, a, a trap before the other one. So it's more of a priority for that one. Unfortunately, he was messing up the so I didn't quite get to it before it spawned the trap. 
Shooting is also a good strategy, especially when you're low on health. Those are shooting with a decent fight. That's probably like, I'd say like three, four seconds off the best segment. That segment there is pretty good. Too great for you to win. This is a little behind the scenes of my mind. Um, so yeah. Kind of important. There's gonna be a few fights where I'm gonna attempt to do a setup as soon as I spawn in, where I'm gonna manipulate the AI. Uh, that was the first one. There's, I think, two others that I'm gonna do in this one. So, it's kind of neat. It's a little minor thing. Also, for some reason, I want to mention this. When you see the total, when if you've been paying attention to the victory screen, it give, it tells you you lose a bit of uh, core energy for the amount of Bakugan, for the um, rather, for the amount of damage dealt to the area from percentage. So if you do a hundred, if you destroy every single percentage, uh, if you destroy every single building, you lose two hundred core and so on for whatever percentage you need. So um, the weird thing is, is even if you destroy nothing, if, if the building, the area is just perfectly still standing and everything, uh, it still destroys it. It just still um, d destroys everything and you have to watch that cutscene again. So there's no real point to trying to avoid destroying the area. So we go for it and we destroy them, try to get um, boosts, or stat boosts. So little minor thing, just, it's kind of fun. I find it funny how even if everything's perfect, it just destroys everything and then it just starts again. So This is gonna be the fight where we um uh, we're gonna be fighting Wilda right here, which is the guy we've been using for a while. Wilda! So. Please free Wilda! Please free Wilda! Wilda, it's hard. Be careful and don't let him in close. Nice one! Nice. No, not quite. So I was trying to do an AI manipulation there. I didn't quite get it, but um, what I'm trying to do is for heavy for. There's more to brawling than just combos. Try shooting too. There's more to just fighting than just combos. Try shooting too. So are you ready, Hades? Bakugan brawl. So for you can't do it for fast buck, but for me, for average buck gun, heavy buck gun, which uh, magma, uh, master dragon already is a uh, heavy, and so is a uh, and a few others. Uh, you can manipulate, you can do a mid air attack, which is this. Uh, you can do mid uh, mid air attack and spike them to the ground, and they dodge roll. If you can predict the dodge roll, which is pretty easy to understand where they're gonna roll. You can get right there and then hit them again before they have a chance to respond. Respond to it. It's easier to do with heavier Bakugan, which is why I did it for for Wilda and not say Elfin earlier in the run. So, but uh, it's still a precise timing. There's two different timings you can do. A there's a setup for using doing it with a weak air attack, or a there's a setup for doing a long air attack. The problem with the long air attack is it takes slightly longer to do, so it's a slightly tougher timing. So. Uh, we're gonna be using that for a lot of specifically late game fights, so get hyped for that. So right there is kind of an interesting bit of the story. We are we figured out how to get back to our own universe, so our character was like on the teleporter, gonna go back to our universe and say, "Whoop, see you later," leaving these guys like not able to fight or anything. And then at the last second, he's like, "You know what? I'm gonna stay and help you." So, and everyone was like looking super sad, and he's like. Uh, I should probably stay here now. It's, kind of, it's nice that our character is completely wholeheartedly into this saving thing. Do this one more time. Nice, got it. That's like a two, two, three frame trick or something like that. We're not entirely sure as a community. This game is 60 FPS, we're pretty sure. So, at least the Wii version is. Actually, it might be 30 frames per second. I'm not sure. I don't actually remember. We really didn't look into that much. The community for this game, uh, we actually have a, if you, anyone's watching this that wants to get into Bakugan speedrunning in general, we have a Discord. It is on, we've linked it to every, uh, it's actually kind of hard to get up there, get up here. Because we can't just go vertically. We have to, the best way to go vertically is with like that, that. crystal just disappeared. Look, it's over there now! <laughs> Look, it's over there now! 
Also, a big meme in the community is just mimicking. It's, it's not only me mimicking the voices of these characters. Because some of them get kind of wacky. Hitting you hard. Use an ability card to slow him down. Impressive. In one of the next two splits, one of the next two fights, I'm not sure exactly. But we're gonna we're gonna come across an ally who has a really good strategy. Perfectly working voice. That doesn't sound weird at all. That's gonna be fun. Also, no, really steamed! That's it! Now I'm really steamed! Altair, <laughs> let's go! Bakugan go! Nope, I didn't get a single one. Dang it! I'm gonna focus on this guy first because he's a really decent chance to destroy It's really hard for people to first. This impressive. Uh, I'm, I should say, um, it's pretty uncommon to lose attack. this one from uh, the yellow icon mark, from on the map to protect mark. it. You're more likely to die. Except you know that one time I was during a marathon run and I lost right after someone mentioned it. One of the one of the other runners um, mentioned, "Oh, it's very hard to lose this fight," and then I immediately died because the landmark got destroyed. Because he went, Altair went to town on it. Your landmark's almost destroyed. Stop no! Them. Oh my god. Please, no. Okay, good. He just decided to level it. So I could probably mention that. Um, for some reason in this game, Baku, each Bakugan has a different type of AI it can have. It could be a regular basic AI where it will go for the, um, it'll go for the, um, the landmark if there's a hologram right in front of it, which is supposed to deter the Bakugan. We haven't gotten to it quite yet, but that's going to be applied later in the run. If there's a hologram right next to them, they'll go focus on that. If we're right in front of them, they'll focus on us. Some Bakugan will decide to just go to town on the landmark, ignoring everything else. And sometimes their AI just doesn't work properly, and they do things like stand there perfectly still and doing absolutely nothing, so I can run up and punch them in the face. Those are preferred. There have been many instances where I've seen the AI, a Bakugan AI, run into the wall, and I just snuck up and beat him, uh, and uh, finished him. So that's preferred. That's really preferred. Sometimes that can go, um, that last, uh, uh, AI type where they just kind of go wherever the hell they want to. It can sometimes be a curse because they'll go around the map doing absolutely nothing. And specifically in one level, we really want them to, like, we want to kill them as fast as possible because there's like five different ones on the map. So if that happens, it's kind of annoying, but it's. I'd rather not lose because they destroyed the landmark, so. No! Dang it! I was trying to do some movement there. Pretty precise movement. So. Um, if you go the way I just did and, you know, not get caught, you can very easily, um, avoid every single one. It looks like you're going to get it caught, but you don't actually get caught at all. So, it's preferred to go like that, but I just barely miss messed it up. So. And it's really important that I have my invisibility for right here, because I really don't want to have to slow down. You're supposed to hit the trash can, or the barrel right next to them and distract them, but I really don't want to do that, so I make sure I have enough invisibility there. That's why I have a really precise, like, cycle make, uh, uh, movement I have to make the cycle on. If I mess it up like I did there, it's fine. It's much easier just to walk through them, but still, it's kind of slow when you get caught, so. I was supposed to set up a hologram here. That's a little unfortunate. Um, some, if I get the AI where they just go to town on the landmark and immediately go for it, uh, I can lose this very easily, so we're gonna hope that it doesn't. I was supposed to set up a landmark here. So I'm gonna kinda pay attention. I'm also gonna be doing some AI manipulation in this fight, but I'm gonna kinda pay attention more, because that was actually kind of a mistake. I'm supposed to set up a landmark. So. Nice, dude. Okay, well. marathons and such. Here they come again! Here they come again! 
Where's the pistol? Where's the pistol? Where's the pistol? Where's the pistol? Where is it? Focus on it, thank you. We can't we can't manually head to the yellow icon on your map to protect it. We can't manually select what we uh, lock onto. Heck. So this is a bit of AI manipulation like I mentioned. I'm gonna approach him, him with the shield up. And he's gonna do a charge shot because that's he's really good with AI. Oh god. This is really good, I got a power boost, so I can instantly get rid of it. <laughs> okay, that was kind of redeeming. Um, thankfully, we didn't, our lane mark wasn't destroyed, because if so, we're to lose! We lose! So. <laughs> so that's just a voice that Wilda can say sometimes. Or actually, it's, it's our main character. He can just say that sometimes, and it's kind of... It's really a treat when he does it. It's only if we get a, I think, an S rank, which... Requires us to not take damage, so it's really a nice treat. Or actually, it, I don't think it's an S rank. Uh, I think it's an A rank actually. He says that, so it's kind of neat, kind of a good meme. I'm gonna go to Egypt too. A uh, neat little thing about Egypt too is every other world we've gone to, and we're gonna go to one more, which is USA. Every other place we've gone to, the level with no movement before it is level is level three, the third of each. But this one is level 2 for some reason. It's kind of a little fun factoid. It really doesn't make much of a difference. But, um, yeah. I'm going to be tr hoping to have a power boost. So, there is one particular pillar that if we destroy it first, or we destroy it manually, has about a 70% chance of dropping a attack boost. And it's going to be very important if we get that. Because if we do, we're going to be fighting Helios, which is one of the main antagonists talking around. If we can get the power boost, we can hit him, kill him in two hits, which is a lot faster than alternate, uh, the alternate, uh, the alternate strat, which is, you know, getting punched in the face until he decides he wants to die. So, hopefully we can do it. Heck. Kill him! Thank you. Got him. Sweet. The more you attack your enemies, the sooner you can use your ability cards. I see that the traps aren't much of a match for you. They aren't. It's time to That's where I assume it's. Oh. Dang it. Oh, okay. That was unfortunate. So I got the 30% where it did not spawn. So this is going to be slow. I also waited a while because I want to I want to pick it up as later because that means I have it longer for later, so. Got him. This is cool. Nice one. Nice. Dang it. Very close, but not quite. This is the fight. I mentioned before how you really don't need the attack boost to do every single fight, but this is the probably the fight that saves the most time. Or not quite. This is the most um this is the fight where getting it saves the most time compared to the entire thing. We can skip about, I'd say about mm, seven seconds if we get the attack boost. Actually, probably more than that. We can probably save about ten seconds if we get the power boost because we can just do two heavy attacks and instantly kill him. So, but it's kind of unfortunate when we don't. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say that because a lot of other fights. Well, this is the one where we can get a consistent attack if we're lucky, and uh, it is very impactful. So I shouldn't say that. Egypt 3 is actually one of my favorite splits and is one of the favorite fights in the entire run for me for some reason. Uh, we're going to be using the... I mentioned earlier how we do an AI manipulation with the heavy and standard Bakugan where we can just unlock them. Uh, we're going to be doing that here. And also just there's some enemies. The basic trap Bakugan we're going to be fighting here. Um, I don't know why, but I really like fighting them. It just... I don't know. It's just kind of fun. Uh, if you're really, really good at timing it, you can snipe them out of midair, and it's just super fun to do. So, I don't know. I just, this is my favorite, this is my favorite level of fight. Also, that was really close. I didn't need to heal, I didn't need to recover things there, my, uh, invisibility. Whenever you walk into these circles, um, you have to stand for a bit. Also, that was a fortune hit. You have to stand for a bit. Um, that's also, like, 
the DS version and the PSP version don't you don't have to stand there. you just walk through it and you kind of go so let Drago let Drago go damn bam 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 I'm gonna try to do an AI manipulation right at the start. I'm gonna try to get both of these in one hit. Um, they can do, they can each do two different things. They can each come towards me or they can each walk away from me. Um, so if one walks away, I can handle that. If they both walk away, then I, I can't handle, I can't do this strat. If they both come towards me, it's a very easy strat to do. Nope, they both went away. Nice, so I got I got him. I will also mention the fact that this is one of my favorite uh, fights in the game, mainly because I've had a lot of experiences with amazing glitches. I've had one of these guys walk moonwalk in midair. He just was walking through midair backwards, and I don't know why, but it was it was really magical. So I've had a lot of good experiences. Also, it's just fun to beat up these guys for some reason. I don't know. And also, we're going to be fighting a new enemy Bakugan. Which is, his name is Vulcan. He's basic, he's almost entirely just uh, uh, a Wilda clone. Which is kind of nice to go one on one. That's nice, I got a power boost. The one thing that can happen in this fight is they can pretty, they can go to town on this lane mark. And I really don't want that. Also, shout out to him, he fell out of bounds. But he died anyway, so it doesn't matter. There's no debris I can really. There's no place I can. Nothing I can destroy to give me um, a check boost. Really so. that's, that's not important. It, it really just comes from the crystals. Oh, now you've so. done it. Time to get serious. Time to get serious. Defeat Vulcan. Hi Vulcan. Hi Vulcan. Dang it! No. No. He he saw the read. He read that. You should use them as often as you can. Your landmark's under attack. Head to the yellow icon on your map to protect it. Now that was a solid hit. There you go. So I was trying to go for the harder strat where you use you do heavy attacks, heavy hits. I mentioned before that that, that setup I do that zero to death combo. You can do it with light, light attacks or heavy attacks, but the heavy attacks is much harder timing. If I do a heavy attack chain, I can do exactly one less hit on him. So, I don't know why I go for it sometimes. Other, there's gonna be another rock on later where we, oh, we're actually gonna do that him again. If we do a heavy attack, it could save two hits, but um, it's actually easier timing there for some reason, mainly because there's not weird terrain, so. And so yeah, that's one of my favorite levels in the one. We're gonna be switching to Drago here. This is actually this split's gonna be the last time we use Drago in the entire run. So after this, we're gonna be using him for the rest of the. Oh, we're gonna be using a uh, Wilda. So this is even for the final boss. The final boss, when you play the game story-wise, you you are forced to use uh, Max's Dragonoid. But um, it's kind of annoying because it's actually faster to use Wilda. So when I whenever I do any percent, I always complain that I have to use him. Mainly Wilda is fast is better because he's slightly faster. So this is the route I came up with. It really abuses the fact that you can uh, walk. She spawned really close. Yeah, I spawned right here. It abuses the fact that you can walk after a sec. After about a second, you release the uh, invisibility. You can walk through. You can walk uh, through the like the red things. I forgot uh, the little like eye things. I guess you can say. If I'm on cycle, I go left, but I was off cycle, so I didn't know if I had to go left or right. Left or right, so. Um, specifically, um, if you release invisibility before you leave, before you, um, before you exit the little, uh, point of view, or area of view, I should say. I'm not explaining this very well, and I apologize. I'm also gonna switch the Dragonoid right here, so I'm gonna try to do this glitch. Nice, got it. I'm also gonna sell holograms, so. 
It's important to choose a hologram that's strong against my opponent. It's important to choose a hologram that's it's important to choose a hologram that's strong I hope you guys know that it's important to choose a, uh, a hologram that's strong against your opponent's attribute. Uh, it's very important to know that. So. Um uh, when you release the um the invisibility before you actually leave the zone of view, it saves invisibility, which is going to be very use very important for the next level I'm going to do. I have a very precise route that I only I do really. That um. Uh, that is very very precise. So I'm gonna go for it. Just because I can. Sorry, brawlers, but this ends now. But this ends now. Guantas can be kind of annoying. This is one. This is the longest split in the game in the run. There is a risky strat you can do on this fight. Neat. Kill him! I guess I should mention, uh, I learned this just now. You, uh, you can't kill an enemy from, um, the gate card effects. Well, that's, that's my land. Dang it, okay, I'm over here because there's gonna be a dude spawning right here. Shoot at your opponents too. You might do better if you shoot at your opponents too. Or maybe I could just do what I'm doing, because apparently this isn't working very well. But I'm actually gonna be using projectiles in this fight specifically, because like unlike Wilda, I think I tried to save it earlier, but I didn't finish it. Unlike Wilda, where Wilda is very strong with ground attacks, uh Dragonoid has a very, very powerful projectile attack. Wilda's really isn't much. I use Wilda sometimes to um kind of set up a combo. But that's about it. So Right there, I really should have um, used the projectile, so I didn't have to go all the way over. Oh hey, that's actually really nice. Did I? Okay. Um, apparently I collected it the same frame the trapping started, and it didn't apply. So that's neat. So I mentioned- I didn't mention before. Uh, I really am not going to use many ability cards unless I'm in a very tight pickle because they are extremely slow for how much damage they do. Hey, nice. Power boost. Nice. Ah, oh, dang it. Okay. If I, get a, if I get a stat boost, it overrides the other stat boost. Just like we practiced, except you never taught me anything. Uh, I don't. I don't even lore, bro. This is very quick. This is actually gonna end pretty soon. Destroy this. Jump to go over here for. That was. I. That's whatever. That's the way I like it. So yeah. So the next fight, I actually really like this fight too, this next fight too. And right before we do the fight, I'm gonna have, uh, do my really annoying and hard movement, so. I'm gonna kinda pay attention for a bit, just cause I really, if I can very easily mess this up. And I love doing it just cause it's faster and everyone else doesn't do it, so I, t so, I like to show how it's faster, so. Also, while I'm kinda loading in, I can mention the fact that, um, I mentioned before how there's three different leaderboards, the three different categories, three different console sets groups, I should say, for each category. The Wii is the most random, mainly because I think I started saying this and never finished. It is the most random because it has the weirdest bugs. It has the, the world is extremely strong. It has the glitch for invisibility. invisibility. It's really just the most competitive version. Also, this game is very commonly random marathon. We, this game has gone into a lot of marathons where it's just done races with either three the three main runners or just two of them. So, I really feel like this game would has has a really decent would do really decently in a uh, GDQ, in my opinion. So I don't have enough. Dang it. Okay, I'm gonna get caught here. No entry. No entry. So if I was very very pre uh, precise with that, I would be able to just invisible go invisible through this specific wave of enemy enemies. I would have had just barely enough, but unfortunately I messed it up. So if you mess it up, that's fine. You just get caught, and whenever you get caught, your your uh, meter gets filled up again. 
It's a quick backup, so. I'm switching back to Wilder for this fight, and we're gonna be using Wilder for the rest of the run, so. We only have about, I'd say, uh, 15 minutes of the run left, so. It's important to choose a hologram that's strong against my It's important to choose a hologram that's strong against my opponent's attributes. Okay, so. So, I mentioned a bit earlier how the box, uh, in Egypt, Egypt, uh, won. That the enemy could either run away or come right at me. That same thing happens here. What I really want is, I want Hades to come directly at me, and I want the water guy to go away from me. Hades is very annoying in this fight. Where, um, he, his charge shot, which he uses very liberally, liberally, his charge shot, I'm actually... Dang it. No, I don't. His charge shot, which is bad right there, it goes in three different directions, right in front of him. Heck. So. Uh, he could be trying to destroy a landmark, but he can also just accidentally hit the, um, the landmark. You pulverized them. Also, I pulverized them! Oh god. Ability cards can turn the battle around. Don't so like that, he could be aiming for a landmark, but if he's on the other end, he can just very easily hit the- Or he could be trying to hit a hologram. But if he he can very accidentally hit the landmark instead, and then I lose. So. This is kind of really poorly. So these guys I mentioned earlier how they're different AIs. These guys are both extremely aggressive AIs. Right now. See it right there. He was aiming for the hologram, and he hit the landmark. It did like an eighth of its health. An eighth of its health. That can be. That's very poor. Very bad. You think it's over? I haven't even begun. I haven't even begun. Watch out for Elko's poison attacks. Gate that's kind of nice. The gate card. I'm also gonna go directly for these pillars really quick. Because they have a decent chance of dropping power. I have a decent chance of dropping power ups. Or attack ups, I should say. Nope. Where is. Where is. I'm more focused on fighting Hades than anyone else, really. Just because, like I said, he can just destroy the landmark unintentionally. Dang it, okay, I was trying to manipulate Hades. Uh, if you hit two Bakugan at once, they both take the damage. So it's kind of nice if you can do that. Also, I've been kind of doing this throughout the entire run. What that was is, it's called a, a dash hover. Well, we, we call it a dash hover. What it is is we... If you press Z twice and hold it, you do a dash in midair. But it really drains all of your stamina. Stamina. But if you tap it three times and then hold it, you get the speed boost, but you can hover around. That's really nice because you can go fast backwards, which you can't do when dashing normally. And also, when you dash and do an attack, it does a dash attack. Understandably so. So, um, it's really nice when you can... It is very, very nice when you can, you can just do the movement, you can do the dash, the dash hover, and, um, uh, be able to do a strong hit, a strong air attack, which is very, very nice for moving. It looks like it's a very difficult, uh, glitch, but it actually really is not. That's fine. I really don't need a hologram there, but I'm doing it just to be safe, because weird things can happen sometimes, so. Right here, I'm not gonna focus on the enemies that are currently surrounding me. I'm gonna more I'm gonna focus on the crystals or the Vexus crystals. Cause that will progress the cutscene. That will progress the fight. I could kill all of them, but I, these little uh, snake dudes, but I really don't want to you can't I shouldn't worry about them because I can just destroy the crystals. They're not really gonna do a lot of damage. So I wanna progress the fight the best. The huge crystal! Yeah, I think I, I mentioned it earlier, I didn't finish. Oh, that's actually really helpful, because this last crystal is, a uh, light. Oh. 
But I got another one. Once your ability cards are charged, don't hesitate to let them loose. I actually ready. killed all of them. That's actually kind of nice. You're going to have to go through me first. Hi, Vulcan! Vulcan is extremely annoying in this fight. But specifically not this one. We're gonna fight him again, even if after we kill this guy, this Vulcan. We're gonna have another Vulcan we don't have to worry about. Shooting is an important part of But uh the next Vulcan we have, normally you can probably see how I have only two ability cards currently. Vulcan has access to all four of his, and he can absolutely spam them. There he has no cooldown whatsoever. I'm gonna focus for a second. That's gotta hurt. That's gotta hurt. Dang it, I messed up the- I messed it up. This is the end. So this is Vulcan right here. He has access to all four ability cards, and he has no cooldown. He can spam them however he wants. Okay. Here we go. There you go. So we're on to the second last fight of the game, right here. We're gonna be fighting Dragonoid. We're gonna be fighting Maxis Dragonoid. So, um... Uh, early in the story, when you heard them, someone yell, Give Dragonoid back! And I, I mimicked it. What happened was, someone, uh, one of our friends gave it to, gave Dragonoid to our, to the enemy, because he promised he would free everyone of their problems. Uh, you know, un un understandably, the enemy lied and just stole it and then didn't care about freeing everyone. So now they have it and now we're going to fight him. There's a really, really interesting thing that happened in this fight, though. Um, uh, just when you load into the actual fight, sometimes uh, power boosts can drop. They can randomly spawn. We say sometimes because it's actually just randomly generated. It is actual, it is developer intended to be random. We, that's really the only thing we can understand. There's no way we found to manipulate it. There's no we don't destroy anything. They just spawn. So if we get that. We can save about um, 15 seconds on this fight. So, so for the best, it really only happens. We found once every six runs or so. One uh, once out of every six or eight runs or so. So, oh, we're actually not fighting Max's Dragonoid. We're fighting Cross Dragonoid, which is the second form of him. And Max's Dragonoid is the third. So. We're gonna do under the swipe. Let's hope. Cross our fingers. And if not, we can still do him pretty quickly because of uh, our manipulation I've been doing. Back again, bro! Back again, bro! Let's go. Moment of truth. Drago! Nope. Hang None. on! I'm winning you back, no matter what! Nice. Oh. Okay. Nice. Hold on. Sweet. Yo, that was the best segment. Jeez. Oh my god. That was extremely, really. That was extremely clean. So, very, very good. Unfortunately, world record actually just passed. It my world record is fifty-seven forty-three, by me. So we can't get a world record. Or a console world record, but we can still get sub one, which is actually really, really impressive. Only two people on the Wii version have sub one. So. And like I said before, the categories are separated differently. So, uh, the the portable versions, the DS and the PSP version, have the fastest times, have the fastest completion of the game in about forty nine minutes or so. I'm pretty sure. So, we're not gonna be able. To, we cannot come anywhere close, mainly because there's so much like loading. But, uh, this Wii version is still the most RAM, most competitive RAM, because it's so interesting how it works and such. And has so many exploits. Like, Wilda would not be used at all in the DS version, because he's just not as powerful. So, I mean, he would be used once, but that's really about it. So this is Maxis Helios. He was trying to destroy the core, so, which is the blue thing that's right next to me. That's right next to us. Can you please... 
So, we need to defend the core. So we can become defenders of the core. See what they did there? I'm just getting started. Yeah, sure are, Dan. Reminder, Dan's on our side. This fight can go very, very quickly if we go really slowly, because he can decide just to zone you out completely. Oh my god. We got this! We got this! You sure are you sure are right, Dan? I'm totally in the lead right now. So I had to just do a specific amount of health. I couldn't actually kill him there. Cause now he's taking he's draining health from the core. What? That we're trying to defend. Ooh. Dang, okay, I was trying to get an attack boost there. Uh, I I have to wait here, because just a little, there's a little bit of dialogue. So I try to spend that time to... That's actually really important. I spend the time to try to get a power boost, and also to usually try to manipulate him away, uh, Helios away from the um, crystal right there, because he can do that and just beat me up. So... Also, we barely missed sub. We barely missed a sub hour. Look, whatever happened to Abyss seems to have weakened Helios. Now's our chance. Everyone, yeah. this is it. I'm doing it. Time comes as soon as he is defeated. And time. Ah, oh, dang it! Just barely not sub one. Dang it. Okay. That is Bakugan Defenders of the Core. So, um, I'd like to give a shout out to the Bakugan, the Bakugan speedrunning community, or as I call it, the Baku Crew, which no one else calls it that, but I call it that because it sounds cool. Um, if you, anyone's at all curious about running this game, or any Bakugan game, we have runs for both Bakugan Battle Brawlers and Bakugan Defenders of the Core, and we're working on Battle Trainer, which is certainly an interesting run to be, uh, done. Uh, you can go join our community Discord, it is linked on any, every single leaderboard, for Bakugan on speedrun.com. We're always really open to invite people. There are a bunch of people that come for different things, different wants and different things, uh, different categories. So we're always open. Come and join, it's super fun. And this game's, this community is really open for races and such. So thank you all for watching this run. Uh, Chef is the Baku Bakugan community. And I'm just gonna go out for now. So this is gonna be a submission for a new game plus race with, with Piner, uh, twitch.tv forward slash Piner. So, and I'm Gary J. Thank you guys so much. See ya.